Hey everybody, Mark aka the Nerdy Punk back again today for a new video. Hope you all are doing well. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a video about my uh, letterbox recap, what I watched in January of 2022. So I'm going to recap, I believe I watched 10 movies and TV seasons, 9 or 10. The month was a lot lighter than normal because of work being very busy, but uh, decided to go ahead and make this video to let you know kind of what I've been watching. If you haven't been following me on Letterboxd, I will go ahead and leave down in the description the link to my Letterboxd account so you can check that out if you haven't been, been following that. If for some reason <laughs> you would like to know day to day what I'm watching. Um, but yeah, this is all the movies. Uh, we're currently going through a snowstorm here in central Illinois. Uh, for 2022 gigantic winter storm system that's affecting many states. So if you are along the path of this storm, definitely stay safe and uh, have a good few days inside watching movies. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get started with the first movie. First film that I watched this month and my first film that I watched of 2022 for the new year is Where to Invade Next. This is a documentary from Michael Moore. I've seen almost all of his documentaries many times in the past, including this one. Uh, this movie came out in 2015, and I think it does a phenomenal job at showing Americans, especially, what the rest of the world looks like, and the type of ways that the, the governments of most European countries and most developing countries, or developed countries, shall I say, uh, really provide for their citizens in a way that the American government doesn't. And this is a film that's very much shaped my political leanings um, in, you know, the past five to ten years and uh, really shaped my development as an active citizen and voter and, and that kind of thing. I think it's a really good documentary. Mixes in some humor in there as well, but it really gives us a view at a world and an America that we used to have, but we don't really have anymore as a result of everything from money and politics to corruption and, and all that stuff. So uh, I really enjoy this one. If you haven't seen this, this is definitely one of the first Michael Moore documentaries I would recommend because, you know, it's not as overtly political as something like Fahrenheit 9-11 or Fahrenheit 11-9 or any of those films where he just kind of attacks one side. He's really bringing a lot of attention to, you know, individual issues in this film. And I think it's a good place to start if you've never seen Michael Moore. So really enjoyed this one. Um, I think I gave it four stars on this most recent watch. Next up is my only trip to the theater of January, and that is Spider-Man No Way Home. I saw this very early on in the month. I think it's still in theaters. Uh, it'll probably be in theaters for a while because it's made so much money. <clears throat> but yes, I did see the film. Uh, if you watch my top 10 movies video that I put out last, uh, actually early on in the month, um, definitely recommend that video if you want my thoughts on the movies that came out last year. But this was my number nine, I think, uh, somewhere around there. I really enjoyed it. I can't say I loved it quite as much as everybody else seemed to love it. Um, I thought it was, you know, by far Tom Holland's best Spider-Man film. I loved, you know, the bringing together of all the different characters. I loved the nostalgia. Uh, I loved that they brought back, you know, I don't think it's a spoiler to say this, <laughs> especially since most of you have probably already seen the film, but I loved how they brought back Willem Dafoe and Alfred Molina as the Green Goblin and Doc Ock. Uh, I really enjoyed that, uh, especially Willem Dafoe in the film, who's one of my favorite actors of all time. Uh, I just uh, um, did really enjoy it. It didn't hit me as emotionally as it did for some people. Uh, I think I've just kind of moved past that time in my, uh, my film love <laughs> in the sense that, you know, superhero movies, it's harder for me to take them as seriously as I once did, um, you know. Not that long ago, I'd say 2018, you know, 2019, superhero movies were in contention for my absolute favorite of the year. And it's not to say that I don't enjoy them anymore, because I definitely do. They just don't hit me as hard as they once did, I guess. 
Um, so, you know, there are some flaws I think that people are overlooking with this movie, but it's still a fantastic movie, and obviously if you haven't seen it, you probably should go watch it. Next up is The Last Duel. Uh, I did not get a chance to see this one in the theaters, as many people didn't. Uh, the good news is I think this film is experiencing a little bit of a resurgence, at least among film buffs, in terms of people watching it, but it notoriously lost so much money at the box office. I also talked about this one when I talked about my top 10 movies of 2021. I went kind of in depth with it, so I'm going to kind of, you know, cut this review pretty short, but I really enjoyed The Last Duel. I thought it was unique. I thought it was really, really good filmmaking from Ridley Scott. And I think it's criminally underrated. So if you haven't seen The Last Duel, definitely go check it out. Uh, I believe I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 or a 4. Not 100% sure. <laughs> check my letterbox <laughs> for uh, exact ratings. But I really loved this one. Next up, I watched uh, Disney, one of Disney Pixar's most recent releases, and that is Soul. Came out originally Christmas time 2020. Um, that was, of course, at the height of the pandemic, or one of the heights of the pandemic. <laughs> so that film did not get widespread theater releases. And I remember being very disappointed about that because that was one of the movies that I actually wanted to go see with some family. And I really couldn't uh, because it didn't come to theaters. I, I got the Blu-ray, the 4K Blu-ray through Disney Movie Club. And that's what I watched. And it took me about a year to watch it. But I finally sat down to watch it and was blown away. I loved it. It's in serious contention for my favorite Pixar movie. I haven't seen all of them. But I grew up with many Pixar movies. Toy Story, Finding Nemo, Cars... I remember Cars specifically as a kid because McDonald's, when that movie came out, put out the toys of all the different characters. And that was one of my goals as a kid, to get all the different characters. And I used to pretend, you know, that uh, my living room floor was Radiator Springs and all this stuff. And <laughs> I grew up with these films, but Soul hit me on such an emotional level. It's, you know, it's very heavy for a kid's film. And uh, it made me emotional on several occasions. It's just such a beautiful, beautiful film, um, both visually and material-wise. And I loved it so much. If you happened to have missed Soul, definitely go give it a shot. Uh, again, I believe I gave it a 4 out of 5 for a review. Next up was Dune, another movie that I talked about on my top 10 movies of the year, so I'm not going to go into excessive detail. Needless to say, I loved Dune. I love everything Denis Villeneuve does. Uh, he is a fantastic director, one of my favorite directors working today, and I can't wait to see part two. <laughs> like, I wish we could get part two now. It pains me we have to wait. <laughs> it's such a beautiful film. Um, there were a couple of very minor issues that I had that prevented it from being considered a perfect film. One of them, the fact that it is incomplete. It is literally only half of the story. So uh, we really need to see the second half before I can be 100% confident in my thoughts. But Dune from 2021 was an excellent experience, and I loved every second of it. Next up is Blue Velvet, a film from David Lynch. Uh, this is a movie that I bought the Criterion release for, I want to say, like, July of last year or something, and it took me, what is it, six months to watch it? <laughs> it took me quite a while. Um, you know, I have to be in the right mood to watch certain films, uh, but I was in the right mood, and I watched Blue Velvet, and I was in awe of it. Uh, I just adored the film. It's a, it's a perfect five out of five for me. It's such a strange film, as is all of David Lynch's work, uh, but I would say this is the movie that really makes me fall in love with David Lynch as a filmmaker. Uh, my opinion of him is at the, the sky being the limit. I mean, I adore the dude's work. I'm diving into more of his films. Uh, I've planned this year unofficially as kind of being the year of Lynch for me. Last year was kind of like my year of Tarantino. I watched all of Tarantino's movies, and I loved them. This year, my goal is to watch all of David Lynch's movies. 
And currently I'm working my way through the original series of Twin Peaks, and I'm really excited to give my thoughts on that series when I work my way through that, um, which I actually am going to talk about again in just a minute. But Blue Velvet was incredible. It features a pretty solid performance from Kyle MacLachlan. I really loved, uh, what's the, what's her name? Isabella is her first name. For some reason, I've forgotten her, her last name, but she had a great performance. Laura Dern was really good in this movie as well. And it's just such a great exploration of small town life and kind of the, the darkness that lurks below the surface. <laughs> and that's really all I'm going to talk about with this movie. It's a movie you have to see to believe it is fantastic. So Blue Velvet could not recommend more. Also, music. Um, <laughs> forgot to make this point. The music in the film is incredible. Obviously, the song Blue Velvet is featured in the film, and I love the way it's featured. But Roy Orbison, with his song In Dreams being featured in this movie, is one of the best uses of song ever in a film, in my opinion. I love it so much. And this movie really made me a Roy Orbison fan as well. I've been diving into Roy Orbison's music. So again, couldn't say enough good things about Blue Velvet. <laughs> so next up, like I said, I've been diving into the original series of Twin Peaks, and I finished the first season this month, uh, working my way through season two currently. And I had seen the first season before, I stopped midway through season two when I was watching it on Netflix back in the day, and this was actually the first thing I ever watched in the David Lynch world. And it's weird, <laughs> but it's more normal for David Lynch. Um, it's a very quirky, especially the first season, a very quirky police procedural you know, type show, and it goes in a lot of different directions, but it doesn't get like super weird until the second season, <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, but the first season is just a perfect season of television, in my humble opinion. I loved it. Uh, Kyle MacLachlan as Agent Dale Cooper is just one of the best characters ever created for TV, film, etc. Um, I am currently obsessed with the show, <laughs> and I am binging it uh, as fast as possible, <laughs> basically. So, like I said, I have the goal of watching everything David Lynch this year, and Twin Peaks is a big part of that. So, very excited to continue on with that series. Next up, I I wanted to include this, even though it's not like an official film. I rewatched the Comedy Central roast of Bob Saget uh, this month. And of course, this month we lost Bob Saget. Uh, rest in peace to one of my all-time favorite comics. Uh, that was a very sad loss, and one that actually hit me kind of hard. Um, he's you know, actually a little bit younger than a lot of my close relatives. And, you know, obviously I loved his comedy. Um, grew up with him on Full House. And he was a lot of my childhood <laughs> on Full House. And so the, this loss really hit me pretty hard, as it did a lot of, you know, Full House fans and Bob Saget fans. Uh, as I grew older, I discovered his stand-up, and he is known for a very filthy stand-up set, and I just love it so much. He's he's a hilarious guy, um, or he was, unfortunately. Again, rest in peace. Um, so, you know, as kind of a, um, a celebration of his life, I wanted to watch some of his stand-up and, of course, the Comedy Central Roast, which is one of my favorite roasts of all time. I loved the dais that they had there. Uh, Gilbert Gottfried was there, Norm MacDonald, of course John Stamos, and uh, I thought everybody just knocked it out of the park. Greg Giraldo, who is also somebody that we lost um, quite a while ago now. I think he passed away in the early 2010s, and I don't know if this was the one that had Patrice O'Neill. Or if I watch something else that had Patrice O'Neill, but another fantastic comic that's no longer with us. Um, yeah, a bit of a bittersweet, you know, watch, but I loved it. I didn't give it a rating because I don't really give ratings to stand-up comedy because I think it is so incredibly subjective um, as to what comics you really like and what comics you don't. So, but I obviously really love Bob Saget. Um, so, happy to watch this again. 
and rest in peace to a legend. And the last film that I watched of January 2022. January was an incredibly busy month for me, hence the reason why I didn't watch very much this month. Um, I watched a, a film called Life is Beautiful, which was actually a recommendation from one of my students. And uh, we're getting ready to kind of talk about World War II, and we've been talking about World War I in my history classes. And she recommended this to me, and it was incredible. Absolutely incredible. A couple minor issues I had with the film, but it is a surprisingly emotional journey. Like, you'd expect a movie about the Holocaust is going to be emotional, uh, this obviously was, but uh, it was also surprisingly humorous. Um, it's really about, if you haven't seen the film, it was an Academy Award contender back in the 90s, late 90s when it came out. It's written, directed, and stars Roberto Benigni, who's an Italian comedian. And the first half of it really feels like a Chaplin movie, like it was heavily inspired by Chaplin, it has that kind of humor, it's very sweet, um, and then the second half is when he and his family have been taken to a concentration camp, and he tries to get his son through this traumatic event by pretending that the whole thing is just a game, and the premise sounds like that could come off very, uh, poorly, <laughs> to say the least, you know, treating the Holocaust like it's a game, but it doesn't. It it gives you just this glimmer of the best of humanity while you're seeing the worst of humanity in the Holocaust, and it's a, you know, it's an enraging film because it reminds you every time I'm reminded about the Holocaust, I get so incredibly angry that the Nazis got enough power to carry out something like that, that that ever happened in humanity. Um, because you just, you want so badly to go back in time and prevent all of that from happening, but you can't. And so in that, in that instance, it is an enraging film in a good way. But it's also such an incredibly heartwarming movie because you see that father-son relationship, that dynamic... As a dude, that always hits me. <laughs> um, but then you have just him using humor. One of the great things about humanity is humor. And he's using that skill to help make his son feel more comfortable and shield him from the evils that are taking place. And yeah, <laughs> I was overwhelmed with this movie. I loved it. Uh, incredible experience to finish off the month. All right, so that's January of 2022. I uh, hope you all had an incredible month. First month of the year down. Uh, I haven't seen any new releases yet for this year. So, you know, some of the kind of throwaway January movies came out. I didn't really have an interest in seeing them. Plus, I was pretty busy. I have a feeling February will be my first trip to the movies for a brand new release. Uh, so definitely look out for... Maybe some videos in February. Uh, we'll see how my schedule gets, how crazy it gets. <laughs> I've been pretty busy lately, but we'll see exactly exactly how it goes. I hope you all have an incredible February. Have a great weekend coming up here. If you're dealing with snowstorms like I am, stay safe and uh, have a great day. Bye.